Tonight, as I said, is the first night of Muharram, and we are now, the Ayyam Husayniya are upon us. The days and nights of Muharram have their own mu'ajiza, they have their own miracle. And I've said this before, that every month has its own specialness. The month of Ramadan has its own uh, uh, miracle. When the month of Ramadan comes, we have a sense of greater spirituality. We feel like reciting Quran. We feel closer to Allah. It's easier to fast. The same with the month of Muharram, you know, around the year we have Majlis for Hussein, we listen to Marthia, we listen to, we do Ma'atam, we cry for Hussein. But the month of Muharram is different, right? Even before Muharram starts, you must have seen this a lot now, you know, through, through media and, and now the internet, all over the world, you know, from east to west, uh, places like India, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, you know, uh, wherever there are, you know, lovers of Ahl al-Bayt, um, you see that in alleyways, in mahallas, in kuches, you know, banners are being put up, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, mosques, mos mosques are being adorned, people are putting on black clothes, volunteers get ready, food gets ordered, you know, programs get sent out, speakers get invited, and it brings its own uh, um, karama. And, and, and one of the things it does is that it makes us forget our own problems regardless of what we had been struggling with until last night. We may have been struggling with some financial issue. We may have been struggling with the loss of a loved one. We may have been struggling with some relationship. You know, everything is put on hold. Now our preoccupation is Hussein. This itself is a miracle that 1400 years later that one man has this control over humanity, over the world, that it never grows old, it remains fresh, and it's passed on generation to generation. And one of our obligations is to make sure that we pass this on to the next generation. And we do this in many ways, not just by coming to the mosque, but even changing our environments at home as well. That as soon as Muharram starts, even the youngest of our children should feel that something different has now begun. You know, and I've said this three years ago as well, when I, when I did a series on the 12 nights, I said, that even if you don't have a banner that says, Ya Hussein, take a simple black cloth and put it up in your living room, in your family room. You know, have rules in your home with your children. These 12 nights, we're not going to watch television. We're not going to watch movies. These are the days and nights of Hussein, alayhi salam. And, uh, you know, Sayyid ibn Tawus, one of our great scholars, he says that one of the signs of being loyal to the house of Fatima is that when Muharram starts, you stop grieving about anything and anyone besides Hussein. That your occupation is now Hussein alayhi salam. And we have many ahadith from the Imams as well. I just want to mention a couple before I come to the Masai for the first night. You know, we're told that uh, uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, when Muharram would start, he would establish majlis in his home. And uh, for the first 10 nights, he would invite people to his house, he would invite poets. And he would ask them to recite Ash'ar in praise of his grandfather. And people would cry. And then when people would have cried, he would say to them, Oh people, do not think only I am present here. Even the spirit of Hussein is here with us. And that Hussein himself comes to places where his majlis is held. And when the majlis has finished and people have cried for him, this is Imam al-Sadiq He says, Hussein raises his hands and prays for the forgiveness of the sins of his Shia and of those who have wept for him. And we see this again with our eighth Imam al as well, that he would call the poet Di'bil al-Khuzai and say, Oh, Di'bil, ascend. He would sit down and Di'bil would sit on the pulpit. And he would say to Di'bil, recite Ash'ar of my grandfather. He would draw a curtain and ask the women to sit on the other side. And he would have the children, the women, the servants, everybody would sit and the majlis of Hussein would take place. And he would say, this is a tradition from my father Al-Kadhim, that on the first of Muharram, Imam Musa Al-Kadhim would start crying for Hussein until the day of Ashura. He would cry. Imam Al-Rida says to his companion Rayyan bin Shabib, he says, Yabna Shabib, if you want your sins forgiven, cry for Hussein. Yabna Shabib, if you want 
your sins to be washed completely so that you are like a newborn child, then go and visit Hussein in Karbala. <laughs> Yabna Shabib, if you want a home in paradise in the neighborhood of Rasulullah, then send blessings on Hussein and curse his enemy. Yabna Shabib, if you want the same reward that the martyrs with Hussein had, then every time you remember Hussein, say, Ya Laytana Kunna Ma'akum. If only we had been with you, O Hussein, what a lofty status we would have attained. Then he says to him, Yabna Shabib, by Allah, if a man loves a rock, Allah will raise him on the day of judgment with that rock. Whatever you love in this world and attach yourself to, that will be with you on the day of judgment. So Yabna Shabib, if you want to be with us in this world and in the hereafter, then rejoice when we rejoice and grieve when we grieve. And so sometimes, you know, I, I, um, I see people who say to me, you know, why do you cry for Hussein? Why do you cry for Hussein? And there are many different, you know, philosophies that come up. We cry for him because he sacrificed his life for Islam. And we cry for Hussein because he saved humanity and he stood up against oppressors and so on. But I'm going to share something with you. And this is just a personal opinion. Perhaps it might be an emotional response, but it is nonetheless what I feel right now as Muharram starts that I want to talk about. I think we really don't have a choice. Why? Because Imam Sadiq says, خُلِقُوا شِعَتُنَا مِنْ فَاضِلِ تِينَتُنَا وَعُجِنُوا بِمَاءِ وِلَايَتِنَا He says, our Shia were created from the leftover clay that we were created from. And then their essence was kneaded with the water of wilaya. You know what that means? That means just like when you bake bread, you take flour and you take water and you mix it. And then you knead it before you can bake it. The Imam is saying that when Allah created us, He left some of what He created us from. And then from that He created our Shia. It is in your essence this is the greatest blessing that you can thank Allah for. The living Imam as well, there is a hadith from him, Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says, Khuliqu Shi'atuna min Shu'a'u anwarina wa baqiyatu tinatuna. Our Shia were created from the rays of our nur and what was left over from our clay. When a person, his essence is mixed and comes from the essence of Hussein, how do you ask him, why do you cry for Hussein? Why do you cry for Hussein? You know, I was speaking to some of the brothers, inshallah, leaving tomorrow night and going to Karbala, inshallah, may we all get such a chance and may they also go and come safely, inshallah. That last year when I was there for Arba'een, and I was blessed with the opportunity to walk from Najaf to Karbala, there was these questions as well. Why do you walk? You know, who started this tradition? Did the Imams walk? And there's answers to everything. But what I say to everyone is, don't rationalize Hussein. Don't try and understand Hussein. You just, when you go to Karbala, you just get sucked in. You get pulled in. You know, people will philosophize. They'll do this. They'll do that. As soon as you approach the land of Karbala and from the far you see the dome of Abbas shining, you will forget all your reasoning and all your philosophies. Your heart will just begin to beat, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. And the things that you see on the road, I saw people who were crippled, they're dragging themselves. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. I saw young men jogging all the way. Why? What is wrong with you? Hubbul Hussein qad ajannani. The love of Hussein has made me mad. This is what they're saying to me. Mothers carrying their children, putting them in boxes. They don't have a stroller. They're just pulling the boxes along, dragging it. Why? We are going to Hussein. We are going to Hussein. You see a man going, singing on the road. Amiri Hussein and wa ni'mal Amir. My Amir is Hussein and what an excellent Amir he is. And on the road there are signs that tell you 80 kilometers left to Jannah, 60 kilometers left to Jannah, 20 kilometers left to Jannah. And as you walk, you are coming closer. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. How do you rationalize this? 
You know, the sixth Imam says that one day when Hussein was a young boy, he was running and the Prophet, he came to the Prophet, peace be on him, and the Prophet picked him up and placed him on his lap. And he said to his people, he told them about what will happen to Hussein. And then he said, <laughs> That in the killing of Hussein, there will be a burning passion in the hearts of the believers. <laughs> there is a that will cool this burning pain for Hussein. And it is true, is it not? Can you ever think a time when you do not want to cry for Hussein? Can you think of if the Imam returns and he avenges the killers of Hussein, will you stop doing Matam of Hussein? When everything is said and done and you are in Jannah, do you want to go to a Jannah where there is no Majlis of Hussein? لا تبرد أبدا And then the sixth Imam alayhi salam says, Be Abi قتيل لا كل أبرا May my father be ransomed for the one who was killed for tears. And someone asked him, Yabna Rasulillah, what is Qatili Kuli Abara? He said, Hussein Ma Dakarahu illa Ma Dakarahu Ahadan illa Baka. Hussein was killed for tears because no one will remember Hussein except that he will cry for Hussein. So all the philosophies aside as to why Imam Hussein gave his life, my question is simply this. That if Hussein died to save humanity only, then why are the angels crying for Hussein? If Hussein died to rescue humanity, then why are the jinn crying for Hussein? If Hussein died only for some philosophical reason, then why are the Anbiya crying for Hussein? We are told that every prophet of Allah cried for Hussein. When Adam salam came, Jibreel came to Adam and told him the story of Hussein. Adam cried for Hussein. Nuh cried for Hussein. Ibrahim cried for Hussein. Last month, Ibrahim's sacrifice was postponed. This month, that sacrifice will be fulfilled. So, Ibrahim was told the story of Hussein. He cried for him. Musa and Isa salam, cried, for, salam, cried for Hussein. Then we are told finally that when Hussein was born and came into this world in physical form, on the seventh day, Jibreel came to Rasulullah and the Messenger of Allah was holding his grandson wrapped up in a swaddle cloth from Jannah. He was kissing Hussein and holding him and smiling. And Jibreel came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, your Lord sends you salams. And your Lord says to you, name this child Hussein. And when Rasulullah is pleased with him, he says, Jibreel is crying. He says to Jibreel, why are you crying? He says, oh, now look at how Jibreel is looking for a way to break this news to Rasulullah. This is the first majlis in, the ummah, in, in this ummah. Jibreel asks Rasulullah, he does not tell him directly. He says, oh, Ahmad, do you love this child? He says, yes, oh, Jibreel, I love this child. He said, but your ummah will kill him. How will they kill him? And Jibreel now begins telling the entire story of Rasulullah. This is the first majlis. Once this majlis is, is done, then the second majlis is now Rasulullah sits with Ali and Fatima. Now she sits, now Fatima and Ali are the azadar and Rasulullah is reciting the majlis. He begins telling them and Ali is crying and Fatima is crying and they're holding their baby and realizing this. What I find interesting is that Fatima did not ask Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, why will my Hussein be killed? Because she has understood that there is a greater purpose to this. For what reason must my son be killed? She only asked him, Ya Rasulullah, when Hussein is killed, will you be there? She said, he said, no, O Fatima, I will not be there. Then she said, Ya Rasulullah, will Ali be there? He said, no, Abu Hassan will not be there. He said, then I am the mother, Ya Rasulullah, will I be there? He said, no, O Fatima, you will not be there. Then will Hassan be there? No, Hassan will not be there. Now Fatima asked only one question. She said, Ya Rasulullah, then who will cry for my Hussein? Who will cry for my Hussein? Why? Because Fatima knows that this message will only survive through the tears that will flow generation from generation from generation. And it is at this point that Rasulullah says to him, O Fatima, do not worry about this. Allah will create a nation of Shias, of, of, of your Shias. O Fatima, their men will cry for the men of Hussein. Their women will cry for the women of Hussein. Their children will cry for the children of Hussein. And it is at this point that Fatima said, Ya Rasulullah, I will not enter Jannah without these people. I will not enter until I intercede and I take every single one of them with me. Ajrukum Allah. This is the first night of Muharram in the year 60 AH when Muawiyah died in the month of Rajab. 
and a man and, a, and Yazid sent a message to Medina to the governor to Walid bin Utbah and said to Walid, Oh Walid, take bay'ah from Hussein and if he refuses, then kill him. And a messenger came from the court of Walid. Imam al Hussein was praying in the mosque of his Jad Rasulullah in the evening. A messenger came to him and said, Oh Aba Abdullah. The governor Walid summons you. Hussein realized something was wrong because it was in the evening and it was not normal to be summoned to the court of the governor. He said to him, you go and tell him I'm coming in a little while. Hussein went back to the house. He said, oh Abbas, you come with me. Oh Ali al Akbar, you come with me. Oh Qasim, you come with me. He took all the, all, the, all the brave young men of the Hashemites with him and he went to the court of Walid. When he came to the court of Walid, he said to them, do not enter into the court with me. They will think we have come for a confrontation. You wait outside I will go inside if there is a problem I will raise my voice and you will come in now the young Hashemites men are standing outside Imam Hussein goes inside he sees that Walid is sitting on his throne besides him is the cursed Marwan ibn al-Hakam Walid shows a letter to Imam Hussein and says that Muawiyah has died Imam Hussein recites the ayat of Tarji. He says, Yazid has sent a message and said you must pledge allegiance to him and that if you do not pledge allegiance then I am to kill you Imam Hussein read the letter, then he said to him, he said, oh, oh Walid, it is not appropriate for a man like me to be pledging allegiance in the dark of the night in your court alone. If you have something to ask me, ask me in public and I will answer you then. At this point, Marwan intervenes and says to Walid, Oh Walid, if Hussein leaves this right now, you will never get by from, 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 from Hussein. He is an evil man, but he knows Hussein. He says, Oh Walid, take by from Hussein right now by force. Otherwise, strike his head off right now. Do not let him go. At this point, the son of Zahra is enraged. He points to Marwan and he says, Anta taqtuluni yabna zarqa am hadha kathabta wallah. Will you, O son of an unchaste woman, kill me or this man? By Allah, you are lying. But when Hussein raised his voice, the doors of the court opened up. Abbas came in with a naked sword. Ali Nakbar came in. Qasim came in. When Marwan and Walid saw that the Hashemite princes are with Hussein, they stopped insisting and said, Oh Hussein, go in peace. We will deal with this later on. Hussein came back to the house. He realized that now it is time to leave Medina, that things will not be well. He began calling the family together. He sat and discussed with them. He said to them, it is time for me to leave. It is not right for me to stay in Medina and I must leave. But not everyone can come with us. Um Salama was to remain in Medina. Um al was to stay in Medina. Fatima Sughra was to remain in Medina. Muhammad al Hanafiya and Abdullah bin Jafar were to stay in Medina. Many of the rest were going with Hussein. But as preparations began and Abbas was overseeing the preparations, Hussein realized he is now parting from the Medina of his Jad. Hussein has lived all his life in Medina. Hussein is attached to this Medina. Hussein goes for the ziyara of Rasulullah. Sheikh as saduq in his Amali reports, he says that when Hussein came to do ziyara of Rasulullah, he came to the grave of Rasulullah. He wept, he, he, he wept for a long time at the grave of Rasulullah and he went into prostration at one point he says Hussein had a vision Hussein had a mukashafa in which he saw his Jad Rasulullah he said to Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah I do not wish to leave Medina why do you not pray to Allah to take me away so that I remain besides you in Medina Rasulullah says to him Ya Hussein ka anni araka murabmilun bidamik Oh Hussein it is as if I can see you now rolling in your own blood Ya Hussein inna laka darajatan fil jannah la tanaluhu illa bis shahada Oh Hussein you have a rank with Allah you will not attain except through martyrdom. Go to Iraq, O Hussein. It is time for you to leave. Hussein returns now with determination to leave Medina. Abdullah ibn Abbas comes to him and says, Ya, ya Aba Abdullah, why do you have to leave Medina? Stay in Medina. We will fight and defend you. Hussein says, Inna Allah sha'an yarani qatila. O ibn Abbas, Allah wishes to see me being killed. To which ibn Abbas says, Then why do you take Zainab with you? He says, Inna Allah sha'an Oh Ibn Abbas, Allah also wants to see them captives. Oh Allah, I, oh Ibn Abbas, I have to take them as well. Preparations begin. The, the camels are loaded. The children and the women are brought out. At this point we are told that a voice calls out and someone says, Oh men who are not mahram, move away. Oh men, lower your gaze. 
Zainab, the daughter of Zahra, is now leaving. Zainab comes out. Hussein is sitting on a chair. He stands up. He comes forward. He holds Zainab and takes her towards the mount. Abbas comes forward and holds. He places his knee forward so Zainab can step on his knee and rise to the camel. Al Yunil Akbar comes and holds the camel. This will repeat again and again when they leave Makkah. When they come towards Karbala, I would say, Oh Zainab, this memory will remain with you for a long time. Because on the day of Ashura, the day after Ashura, when the prisoners are being taken to Kufa, then Zainab will stand besides the camel. She will look to the right and left and see there is no one left. They will only be Shimra with his whip. Then Zainab will turn towards Furat and says, Akhi Abbas, Anta Ladi Arkabtani fil Madina. Abbas, it was you who helped me to get on this camel in Madina. Who is going to help Zainab now to get on this camel? Ajrukum Allah. The Kafila got ready to leave. Sheikh Saduk says that before the Kafila left Madina, the last thing that Hussein did after he had done ziyarah of Rasulullah and his brother Hassan, Hussein went for the ziyarah of his mother Fatima. And Sheikh Saduk says, he says that when Hussein would go for the ziyarah of Rasulullah, when Hussein goes for ziyarah of Rasulullah, he would walk with waqar and sakina. He would walk with peace and tranquility. Hussein would walk and it would appear like a mountain was going for ziyarah of Rasulullah. Kal Jabalur Rasik Hussein would go for ziyarah of Rasulullah. But he says when Hussein would go for ziyarah of his mother, he would walk hastily like a little child running to his mother. Hussein walked hastily and came to the grave of Fatima. I do not know what Hussein said at the grave of Fatima. But Perhaps he said, Amma, this is the last salam of Hussein. Amma Fatima, Hussein is leaving Medina for good. Hussein will not come to your grave again and do salam. I will not be surprised if a voice called out from the grave and said, Oh Hussein, Zahra is leaving Medina as well with you. Oh Hussein, wherever you go now, I am with you, my child. Go forth to Iraq and I am with you. Wa Gariba. Wa Madluma Wa Husayna Matami Hussein Ya Hussein